Hello everybody, welcome, my name is Essa Ryan. Today I'm very excited to be playing a game not of my own creation. The wonderful Zondagskind, the wonderful creator of previous challenges we have undertaken on this channel before. They've been very good, so I'm really looking forward to playing this again. There's quite a few different content creators taking part in this challenge. I'm going to leave details of where you can find it yourself in the comments and on the description of the video, but also come for to Discord if you want to see this save file for my attempt. I'll put a picture up of the rules in Discord as well. Today we are playing Abraham Lincoln, the newest leader of a America and one that is very, very interesting, especially after the buff he received in the recent update. And today's challenge is this. Measure of Devotion. Any win condition. Six player map with random opponents, seven seas, secret societies, monopolies and corporations, dramatic ages. We have to win the game. I've got it on deity, but there are five achievements to be taking along the way. Build my first plus four industrial zone in the medieval era. Be the first suzerain of at least three city states. That's ten to choose. Monopolize at least one plantation resource. That may actually be quite tricky. Finish controlling at least one opponent's capital. Well, there you go. Domination. <laughs> we may be quite aggressive this game. And finish with at least one city that is ecstatic and has a film studio. Well, that's every game I play. So there you go. I'm going to dive straight into this. But remember, come to Discord if you want details. Sit back. Relax. Think about your favorite color. Now think about a world where that color is banned. No one can use that color. It's a terrible world. Let's get started. Turn one. And we know this is a seven seas map. That is mostly landlocked with a couple of random lakes and oceans in it. So this is probably not going to be a world end ending continent breaking divide probably just a large puddle but we have a river rainforest that means i'm pretty equatorial in the middle of the map that is a spice towel which is already four food and two production and you know how much we love those juicy plantations as abraham lincoln mm, let's not talk about that but there's also plains hill there there's plains hill there this amber does not have a plains hill that is just a simple plains tile fresh water is limited to this section as well all right so we actually have a few options here. Option one, cross the river, settle on the maze. That would give my city center two additional gold and would let me work a culture tile immediately. Option two, stay put. I can work the spices immediately. I lose the rainforest, but it's a pretty good tile. Plains Hill would mean my city center has another production under it. Yes, we always, everyone loves production under them. Mm. Option three, we move across to this plains tile. Again, it's a plains hill, but we don't lose the rainforest. We are, however, in the middle of three different resources that provide extra yield. I am very tempted to move and settle on this tile. I'm just going to move my warrior down and there is a banana tile. There's a 3-2. I think that decides it for me. I'm going to move onto this tile in order to preserve this plains hill. It actually gives me more access to the water later in the game. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. Here's Washington. And with that juicy yield, yeah, four turn growth. Pretty good. We'll immediately go for a scout. And now we need to talk about the game modes. We have Monopolies and Corporations mode on which means that luxuries and tourism all of these things are even more important than usual we all know how good a tourism victory is how easy it is on monopolies and corporations mode nothing's changed and if anything secret societies mode makes that even easier there's loads of different optimizations we can make dramatic ages however dramatic ages is going to lead to quite a chaotic game now as the game goes later turn 150 onwards probably renaissance era onwards we will find that the ai starts getting knocked out by huge waves of three cities they all rebel most importantly for me i have to get 25 era score to avoid a dark age if i do not avoid a dark age i lose cities immediately they flip we go into an american civil war that is to be avoided where possible now i have had a lot of luck on dramatic ages by not settling until the classical era you ride the dark age you settle in the classical era and then you look to go gold from that point onwards i don't know if that's the best option for me but if i settle a second city and i don't hit that golden edge i lose it and then i've got to go and take it back and it's an absolute pain i'm not going to bother with a religion today i've played a lot of very heavy religious games recently let's try something different what i want to do is rush the industrial zone ah yes abraham's industrial zone it will give me two immunities three loyalty per turn and a three unit when i build it and when i put any building in it and they all have plus five combat strength they're like byzantium but american the best way to think about it is this you've got the western roman empire aka the old roman you have the Eastern Roman Empire, aka Byzantium. Maybe you could argue there was a third Rome up in Russia. Mussolini had his eyes on a Rome back in the 30s and 40s. No, no, no. This is American Rome. It's like Rome as you know it, but with 
that weird sport that no one else plays, but they still call it a World Cup. You know, American ball. It's like you've got the Coliseum, but it's smaller, and in the middle of the desert. No, that's just Vegas. Whatever it is, it's going to be lovely, and it all features rushing industrial zones. We have to do it. In order to make that work, I would like to unlock campuses as quickly as possible. I'd like to unlock a Pingala as quickly as possible for Researcher. Already, you can see there may be some decent spots for campuses. That is unfortunately, that banana tile is sat right on top of the plus three. But all of these tiles will need working. Bronze working, we'll need to cut a lot of them out. Food may be a bit of a problem outside of the first few tiles. He knows what the best play is to start with. I'm going to go pottery. That means I could, in theory, rush a campus, or I could rush plantations. There are two improvements already, and then we can always dip into mining when we are ready to pump a builder out. Owls of Minerva has been discovered already. Oh boy, Preslav. Now, there are a few city-states we're looking at today. If a cad appears at any point, get excited, because my three melee troops will be able to bash walls down immediately. That'll be wonderful. I actually don't know which secret society I want to go for. Owls? Lots of trade routes. That could be a lot of fun. Sanguine Pact for vampires, an improved capital. That would help with the industrial zones. Void Singers? I probably won't go Void Singers because I don't want to go religion today, but that is always a fun option, especially for culture and tourism. Hermetic Order wouldn't be a bad move, thinking about it. I'm going to go Campus and Industrial Zone heavy, and Ley Lines would make both of those better, and then the Alchemical Society would make my universities better and give me more engineering points on top of my regular ones. Either way, it's something to think about, and instead of going for an early Pingala, I'm actually going to use this to try and get as much era score as possible. If we can go golden in the Ancient Era, we shall, and Amani Tor, ah, Amani Tor, a new fragrance from Ursa, it's beautiful, it smells like failure, and two-day-old burritos, and that stinky pound you found down the back of your sofa. Dollar, if you don't know what a pound is. Amani will give us two era score for every city-state that I find. There's only going to be ten in this game. Barbarian Clans is not turned on. No harm in finding them all. No harm whatsoever. Geothermal fissure? Interesting. This is all coast, actually. Have we got a little peninsula? Have we got our own little tiny peninsula? Oh, you better believe we do. Oh, it's so cute. I could build the bridge. The bridge wonder. It could be a thing. No, we mustn't get too excited. Any game that involves the creation of the Golden Gate Bridge is one that'll soon to be disappointed because I never get it. What am I going to do? I'm committing to a Dark Age in the classical era, so I'm not going to rush any settlers. I think we may focus perhaps on going for slightly heavy wonder builds here today. Great Bath isn't an option, but Hanging Gardens maybe? Depends on how much desert we have. This is a really landlocked map, by the way. I don't think there's any harm in going for a second or maybe even third scouts and just rushing tribal villages. We'll see how it goes. Two era score. We've got some land around Preslav. Lahore. Also, a first meet. Niang units, not very handy at all, but this is all pushing me towards more of a military build. Two military city-states already. It would be very useful for army creation. This warrior, I can tell already, is going to be an absolute pain in the buttocks. Watch it. It's going to move on to the amber tile. I know it. I just... Yeah. Let me out. So one scout is going north. This scout is going sort of roughly east. I'll be able to start making a granary soon. I'm going to make a third scout. I'm going to do it. The elusive, the legendary triple scout start. I know you never thought you'd see it on this channel. We're doing it. We're making dreams come true. Oh, hello. That's a plus four campus. Interesting indeed. Very interesting. I think a plus four is noteworthy, really, isn't it? We also have a source of coffee. That's a second plantation. <laughs> that would be a grand total of minus four loyalty per turn in my capital. Now, luckily, that's not going to make a difference. We'll have to keep an eye on that if we're going to be going for plantation monopolies. I think, you know, a builder would be quite handy. I can work this maze to get the boost to irrigation, and then I can get two plantations down here and here, and maybe even buy some tiles and go for here and here. I don't know, but that's not a bad start. High population Washington, that's what we're going to go for today. Oh, the hut of goodies is protected by barbs, but I shall try anyway. I've earned experience. Okay, I can get hit, run away, and then promote. It's not a bad outcome, that. Or not. Or they'll just stay put. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone, friend. Bye-bye. I always like going alpine for my scout promotions, by the way. I just think going onto hills is 
way better because you see more. So the whole point of them is to scout. So why not just go for hills? Lahore. It bows to me. It's another chunk of era score. Oh, and that's a wonder. Which is the one that gives both culture and faith? Is it Uluru, which is clearly painted on the map? It better be. Come on, Lahore. You've got to bring that warrior in that direction. Go find it for me. Code of Laws. God King for a Pantheon. Survey, because I have three scouts out. I'll see if I can get one to the promotion that gives the combat strength. Might be able to even use them as an early game warrior or swordsman or whatever the appropriate power level would be. Uh-oh. America starts next to Cree. Awkward noises. Where are you based? Over there. Oh, and you found Uluru first. Okay, we'll miss out on a little bit of era score there, but that's not too bad. Oh, Woolen. We don't have the first meet there, but they want a Eureka for archery. That's a slinger kill. That's not too bad. I'm going to keep Amani in Lahore for now because I'll be able to just keep an eye on what the Kree are doing. Oh, I found a continent first. That's rare. That's four era score. Nice. Aluru has been found. Okay, good. That was Lahore doing that. I'll just continue to explore for now. This is good. An irrigation. It's not a tile I'm going to be working, but that boost is very very handy. I tell you what, this start is right on the cusp of me just going to settle and try and get a bunch of era score. If I were to put down a campus, plus four, that would be three era score. Settling near Aluru would be pretty difficult given the loyalty, but I could do it and really annoy Cree. I'd be a desert settle and a wander settle at the same time. I'd be worth another four era score, so we'd be on 20. Oh, temptations are high. Temptations are very high to be doing that sort of thing. We'll see how it goes. I'll bring this warrior up. We'll see if we can deal with a barbarian encampment. I think, you know what? I'm tempted to settle out. I'm tempted to settle out, and that is probably going to be a really bad move for me. No. Nope. I'm going to focus on districts. I'm going to focus on... Uh, let's commit to the original plan. A second builder so I can work this amber because we're going to get irrigation into mining and then I'll like take writing for the campus so that I can build that district. Irrigation. Plantation. A little more housing. A little more happiness. Saying that, Cree will buy my luxury for all of the early game gold. Uh, you can have it. That's that's fine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes from old Ursa. What's in the tribal village? Void singers and something. Gold. I think it was gold. I think it was gold. Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. This is a terrible idea. I bought a settler with all the gold the Kree have given me and I'm going to pull back this scout to intercept and I'm going to settle near Aluru for the era score and also to claim this whole area as mine. This feels like a very Civ play, you know? A very Civ play and we should appreciate it for that. Well, I might as well commit to the start then. Let's just go for more settlers. Yeah, use a little bit of gold because Ursa Ryan likes coffee and, and you too can support the channel on coffee. <laughs> Oh dear. That is legitimately a good luxury to take though, and craftsmanship is boosted. Akri, do you want to buy this as well? Oh, you do, but you can't afford it. That's a shame. I'll keep that one for now then. Don't you worry. So okay, is that three plantations in my capital now? Yep, minus six loyalty in my capital. Yay! You know, I'm saying this now, full of confidence. I've never seen a Lincoln game where the loyalty penalty on plantations has been useful or the thing that's changed the game. I cannot wait to see that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I was wondering why this warrior was doing no damage to the spearmen at all, but of course it's because we've got survey in. I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll make sense when my scouts report back with infinite XP. People always tell me to go for that upgrade. I'm still not convinced. A lovely source of amber. Thank you so much. Wheel has been boosted. Now, apart from my capital, one thing that I would love to do, given the fact that I'm going to be playing such a high industrial zone game, is I'd love to go for some cities that can form the aqueduct triangle. It's a beautiful thing. The aqueduct triangle is when you take three cities and then you aqueduct into the middle to create a beautiful area where industrial zone adjacency is pretty awesome. But let me show you what I mean. It normally involves a triangle of cities. So this is a really good example. One, two, three. Now these two don't have fresh water at the moment, but doing that, well that helps. Suddenly all three have access to this Colorado River and now I have a beautiful situation where I have three plus five industrial zones. Now that means each will be worth 20 production once I get coal power plants. Plus five for the zone, doubled with the policy card to 10, and then coal power plant will give it the production again, so 20. Oh, and it can get even bigger because I could just go government plaza in the middle and suddenly there are plus sixes. You get what I mean. Now it's an ambitious plan, so I'm going to just remove it for now. We haven't even found horses, let alone irons. So there's a lot of stuff that could ruin a setup like that, but this is the sort of thing I want to think about. I want to give my cities a lot of space. 
I want to pad them out so I can get to really large populations with them. I, so far, in the last few months, I've really enjoyed playing with taller cities, 20 to 25 population cities, having a load of third and second ring tiles available to each one, but I'll clump them together in the middle and then give them space around the edge. I think that's what I'll do. I think that's what I'll do. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but that could be a fun way of setting this up and actually utilizing this beautiful geothermal fissure. That could help as well. The Ottomans! Glorious golden Ottomans. Honored to meet you. Yes, I'd love to sample your hospitality. We only need seven era score now. Only seven. They will buy my amber. They don't have enough gold to give me enough yet, so I'll let them think about it for a second. Byzantium! Oh no. Another Rome. Eastern Rome. Well, they can't take on Vegas Rome. Where are they? Down there. Oh, that's close. It's worryingly close. All right. We'll keep an eye on Byzantium. Always slightly full of fear when they appear. Ever so slightly. You know what? At the moment, at the moment, this aqueduct plan of these three cities actually did feel fairly decent. So I'm actually going to go and settle up in this area. Again, we're putting pressure on the Cree, but I'll go and settle near that plus 4-2 spice tile. We, I, I do like spice tiles to settle near. They're quite fun. I'll bring this builder across to go and take it. Golden Age is now secure, which is wonderful. There's the tribal village. Sanguine pack has been unlocked as well. I don't know. I don't know who I want to play today. It's <laughs> all options are quite fun. Fez already suzerained by Byzantium. Now this is the thing. I've got to become first suzerain of three city states. I've already become first suzerain of one. Preslav. I'm just going to put a little flashy symbol on it there as well as Lahore. So that's two. Ulin will be next. Eureka for archery would help massively. I'll see if I can do that soon. State workforce. Let's get the government plaza sorted. Get a campus sorted. All of the good stuff, really. Oh, there you go. There's the deal. Spare copy of Amber as well, because Lahore is giving me one now. We like that. Well, I've unlocked writing. In order to make my beautiful, beautiful industrial zones, not only do I have to unlock them, but I feel I also have to go for aqueducts pretty soon. So let's pick up the wheel for now. Watermill in Washington is a very handy resource, especially because I do have one bonus maze resource in that city. Keep on working it for now. And oh, it says minus six now. Well, that's just annoying. I think, I think we can, we can do this still. As long as I just get the population nice and quickly, I should have enough population to hold it off. Commit. Commit to Philadelphia. So the city has housing. That's good. Let's just work that oasis to make sure we get the population nice and quick. The city itself is giving me a beautiful two faith per turn and two culture per turn. I like that. I'm going to pick up a trader fast with some of this spare gold and send that back to Washington. That'll help the city to level up nicely. And a monument just gives me a little bit of extra loyalty. Is that worth it. I think that just helps to stop the worst of this. Yeah, the loyalty's looking a lot better already. Already. There's some good trade routes here, but I will just put down the route to Washington just in case I need to come to the city's defense. Having a road down, very handy. Three turns until we grow. The more population we have in this city, the faster we can get all of this extra culture and faith. It's like playing Bull Moose Teddy. It's lovely. Dido. Bit of a landlocked uh, map for you, but I don't mind that. It's nice to know that we probably won't get Byron rushed and that in itself is a is a wonderful thing time for a pantheon so whilst I have a very rainforesty start, there's a lot of breathtaking tiles around Uluru. So Earth Goddess, always an option. I could embrace all of the plantations I have and just go for plus one culture from plantations. I would have one, two, three, soon to be four already. That's pretty big. Plus it's sort of the forbidden option, isn't it? Culture from the things that lose me loyalty. Oh, in fact, it's, it's too themed. I think I might go for it. I could get Reeds and Marshes for the Oasis and other floodplain bonuses. I did see a couple of marshes is around. Yeah, there's one there, but I don't think enough to really sway me either way. I'm going to go Goddess of Festivals. That'll help Washington to grow its borders out nice and quickly. Look at this. Two culture on that tile. Excellent. Ah, we've already hit the stage of a game where Dido wants to buy all of my diplomatic favor. To that I say, of course you can. Be my guest. Charleston, it's on a river, but more importantly, here are some spices. Oh, and with Philadelphia's extra population, we're stable. I knew it. I knew it would be good. Keep an eye on Petra. Even I think Petra would be a good take on this city. All right, we have a governor, and I really want to pick a secret society. I think we'll have a look and see who has gone for what. Cree are hermetic. Byzantium void singers. Phoenicia, hermetic. Ottomans, sanguine. There's a large part of me that really wants to go hermetic order. It really wants to go hermetic order. The reason for it is look at all of this desert. Ley lines tend to spawn in tundra and desert. And if I 
I get some good like adjacencies around this sort of area? Maybe even my capital? I think without alchemical societies and that, yeah, there's there's a lot. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This game is supposed to be a load of fun. Shall we have a look? Go on, RNG gods. Oh, oh, I've settled on one. And, oh, there's some over... Okay, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that gamble was fairly effective. Although, oh, annoyingly, where I was going to put my campus, that is actually a ley line itself. Okay, we'll learn to forgive that one, but that is interesting. Oh, this is really not thrown apart my plans, but it's definitely made me think a little harder about what I'm going to be doing this game. There's still a plus three campus I can build in Washington, which is quite tempting. Oh, the era score is not a problem, though. We're over the shooting by some distance. I'm thinking in the longer run I could aqueduct industrial zone there and then put the campus on this tile instead. I'd still be the plus three. I could probably do better than that. But would I want to? Probably not. Okay, yeah, it actually puts the campus on what is otherwise useless desert. So it's worth the additional gold, especially whilst I've got this gold coming in early game. I mean, look at this. Look at this crazy amount of gold. It's wonderful. Gogi and urban planning will help me just to print a couple of slingers out in my frontier cities. And I've just got a builder because I'm going to go and improve that incense. It is a plantation, which isn't ideal. Not in a border city, but the incense is actually worth more to me to sell, I think. Yeah, I think I'd rather take the gold than the happiness right now. It feels ridiculous to be selling all of this stuff, but I think it's worth it. I've got 48 gold coming in per turn. Nope, sorry, 65, of which 51 is trade. Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam has two luxuries. I will trade with you any day of the week. Oh, they're quite expensive, but I have just sold mine for quite a lot as well, so that's fair. Oh, I just <laughs> made friends with Vietnam. America, Vietnam friends. You see, it's a wonderful world we live in, really. You know, I said loyalty would never be an issue with plantations. <laughs> This could, this could be the thing that disproves that rule. Uh, all right, for now the happiness of having that luxury is worth it, but I'm gonna now sell it for even more gold because I am a greedy, filthy gold boy. We'll see if I regret that. Do I want to go Pingala or Magnus? I have a huge amount of gold per turn, and that means I can just buy my settlers, so I'm tempted to do that and go Pingala. I think I shall. Let's do that. Washington, Pingala, beautiful. I'm gonna see how lucky I am on horses. I'm tempted to horseman rush Creed. There are no walls and no army to speak of. And I've got so much gold, I could just buy horsemen very quickly. Oh, and they have loads of ley lines as well. And loads of coffee. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling quite warry this game. I'm feeling very warry this game. There's my campus. Political philosophy. I don't know what government's going to suit me best. So classical republic will do for now. I can always switch to oligarchy if I go to war. It's another two diplomatic favor per turn from classical republic. An amazing thing. Diplomatic league, charismatic league. Both of them in. I need as many envoys early game as I can get. So we've unlocked horses and they do appear to exist, but I don't think they've plunked anywhere that I was planning on doing anything important. No. It's a good sign. One envoy into Lahore and now I can move Amani away from there and not lose the city state. I'm going to go to Singapore. If I can claim Singapore first, that'll be my third first suzerain. Does that make sense? It kind of does. Let's go and get this source of horse. Horseback. Riding past whatever they are we have them and they're delicious everyone's in a golden age well let's see how these go shall we that's so we can have a look at the religion and byzantium has one other people are getting them i too could grab a religion if i wanted by popping exodus of the evangelists in four profit points per turn that's pretty handy plus two production to encampment districts and buildings this is such a good one i'm tempted to do that as soon as i've got an encampment going monumentality really good way of buying things with gold that's handy four culture for every wonder. Commercial hubs give science and campuses give gold. All right, for now, we're not going to bother with any of these, I don't think. Do I get my own religion? I wasn't going to get a religion, but it is sort of tempting because you know what I'm going to say. I could crusade. I could crusade everywhere. It'd be a really handy way of spreading my religion all over the Cree and then just going and taking them all out in one fell swoop. We shall see. It's a tempting offer. Okay, Diplomatic League. I'm going to take you out briefly for monumentality and inspiration. Yep, I'm going to put Exodus in. I'm gonna do it just in case. I don't know if I'll use the religion for anything useful, but it's good to have one. Never say no to these things, that's what I say. Well, bronze working has appeared and it doesn't look like I have any iron, which is both worrying and slightly annoying. No, I do. There's some in Philadelphia. It's not a lot, but it's some, and that means I have to make use of it as quick as I can. All right, let's go dig it from the ground 
around as fast as we can, get ironworking sorted. Luckily, you will be pleased to know nothing has ruined my plan. So as long as I don't unlock Nita, this absolute travesty of a setup is still possible. It's still possible. We'll see. We'll see if it works, but it should be. It's expensive, but I'm very, very rich. And <laughs> as a scientist that gives a library as well as providing plus one science to all libraries going forward, this is one of my favorite scientists. So I'm going to spend 800 gold just feeding them. Excellent. We've got one, two, three more campuses on the way, saying it a little bit like we're somehow expecting. I think that works nicely. Monumentality. I'm not really doing much of this at the moment. Exodus is still doing what it's doing. A gogi time. This is where I start pumping out just like a few units here and there from Washington and we're going to just start chaining them now towards Cree. I'll just build one, then we'll build an encampment. Then we'll work towards getting Pingala, the requisite promotions. Start generating a lot of great general points. Iron mine. Yay! Byzantium's telling me off for not having honor or piety. That's a fair assessment. I'm not going to argue with that at all. But there's my second campus done. And an extra library and plus one science. Two libraries. I'm up to 24 science now. This is weirdly competitive. Don't know how I feel about this. I'm, yeah, this, this game is so far going relatively well. And, and that's worrying in itself. Just start building some army now. Use a gogi while we can. Korea are even building a road over to me. That is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Machinery boosted. Three archers just ready to go. We've got a warrior on the way. We've got an encampment, which I'll buy a barracks into nice and quick so we can start to afford a great general. Now that I've got swordsmen, that's a good thing. I'm unlocking horsemen and then we'll go immediately for mana arms. I just need three mines. How have I got this far without any mines? That is a valid question. Zanzibar. That's a fun city-state and Auckland that is not so good on this map but at least it's a production city-state oh that's cool Singapore bows to me and that is my third first suzerain so there we go the first achievement completed that's a mine that means apprenticeship is now boosted which means we are nine turns away from being able to get mana arms which is more important the barracks or the stable well, both are useful because the more of these production city states we have on side the better our oh, pound maker has woolen not keen about that i'm going to move amani over to woolen to take this over when we go to war and i'll put an envoy in there but yeah the barracks is now worth three production when producing units i quite like that that, but the stable would mean I could just build a horseman. How long would that take? Three turns of my capital. Oh yeah. A religion. Okay. Judaism's taken feed the world. Eastern Orthodoxy has taken choral music, but I now have a religion. That's good to know. That's good to know. Nothing I can do with it right now, but we'll hold on to that profit for later. I've circumnavigated the globe. I'm on course at the moment to getting another golden age. I've got at least 25 turns to get 14 era score. We'll see if it's possible, but if I go to war, I suspect it might be. Still selling all of my luxuries. Economy is doing okay. Got my first horseman just about to arrive as well. The good thing is Creed don't appear to have any horses or iron at the moment. It's not good for me in the long run. Seeing as I'm taking over their land, I'd quite like it. They had loads of stuff in a weird way, but at least I don't have to fight it. That's the main thing. What's in the tribal village? The boost for sailing and masonry. Nice. I forgot to check about this. So my capital has coffee, amber, and spices. I could get a industry in any one of those for some decent boosts. Nothing I'd really want in my capital to be absolutely honest with you but at least the yields are pretty good i'm going to put the spice industry there get rid of that plant i mean the plantation is giving me culture but it's not so important for me at the moment natural philosophy let's put that in and equestrian orders i don't have many horses and much iron but no one does so we'll claim what we can and pingala let's give you connoisseur now i can get defensive tactics it's just shaved two turns of that which is lovely up to 36 science and 34 culture per turn not a bad Bad little mix. My first swordsman unit. Soon to be many. How's my general coming along? Oh, eight turns away for Boudicca and we've got two turns on an encampment training project. I reckon this is going to time in perfectly. Theology means that I've got one more envoy and there's Preslavs. All of these city-states between and around my cities. I feel a little bit safer now. I've finished my project which means we have next turn. Actually we're going to get the great general. Next turn we're also going to get man -at arms I reckon we are just about about now ready to go after Cree. 26 population in their empire, 19 in mine, seven cities for them, 26 population spread across them, 40 cities, yeah, for, I, I can go from four city to 11 here. This, ladies and gentlemen, I believe, I hope, with the start of something amazing in my empire. This is when the game gets quite interesting. Apprenticeship, industrial zones, three melee units that are now man at arms. Oops, speaking of, let's just quickly get that upgrade done. And Boudicca gives me the 
the boost enlightenment and I can immediately pop her into Philadelphia so that my horsemen, horsemen and mana arms all have plus one movement for next turn. We're just going to rush in and see if we can take this six pop city as quick as possible. I always have to check the Cree unique improvement. It's a healing pillage so you don't get any yields for it. It's just healing. It's always good to know I can never remember. What is most important for us now? I think I've got to get engineering which means I've got to get masonry first so I can build a wall. That will unlock the aqueduct and catapults then I'll either choose whether or not crossbows or trebuchets are more important and then we'll unlock muskets as quick as we can because don't forget the three units we get can have any requirement or any cost you want it's not a problem it just gets popped down for three. Oh, we can start getting this industrial zone sorted I'm just gonna print that settler first and Washington let's get this industrial zone sorted as quick as possible I'm pretty flush on gold as well I'm gonna buy myself my third library we might miss out on Omar but I <laughs> ridiculously Cree are the other people making campuses right now so taking over their kingdom is going to double up my science this couldn't be any more synergized if it tried I've actually managed to swing the Ottomans on side which is beautiful I could work at Byzantium but I feel like this may take some time ideally absolutely ideally I would like everybody on side before I declare war but I need speed at the moment the city is still 20 strength and has no walls this is not gonna last nobody else has denounced them therefore surprise war this will cost me but as long as I wipe them off the face of this planet nobody's ever going to mind interestingly Dido wants in on this war Byzantium does not okay good to know the man at arms comes charging in with Boudicca as does the horseman is it worth just attacking the city yeah it is we're just gonna go straight in and attack the city follow up with the archers just to kill any units that lag behind the man at arms is gonna be the one to whack the city down next turn and the warrior will get upgraded as soon as I've got iron which is next turn excellent my first industry bit of era score for that I'm hoping a golden age is not far away now as and him have denounced me they've basically just told me who my second target is gonna be and I don't mind that that is absolutely fine I think the best thing we can do is just run through with as much speed as we can and to do that I'm gonna bypass the units a little bit and just run straight in on the cities themselves so there we go there's the first city taken immediately my second man at arms I'm gonna make an attack on my city immediately oh well, in the meantime I still have a spy and it's going to by spy I mean scout it's going to pillage which is pillaging everything aha so now that I'm at war Praetorian Guard two production to encampment buildings and districts that's awesome but wounded units heal 10 health every turn that's every turn it's a big change a really big change we're gonna take that off equestrian orders for now I probably should have changed government as well thinking about that I'd like the classical Republic legacy card so maybe we'll hold that for now but I need a new governor I'm going to put down Liang because eventually I'm gonna want builders and she's quite good so just hold this city for a second thank you so much as you can see the city strength has definitely increased a little bit something's been built we knew that was gonna happen at some point they never remain that weak for that long I'm just gonna pillage this mecha wap just to get my horsemen a little stronger and the mana arms will take this city which will give me the feudalism boost and make both cities loyal at the same time excellent there's the capital 42 strength don't worry Boudicca's here we have mana arms we're very strong don't mind me if I just borrow this campus engineering excellent I will get machinery quickly just whilst I wait to build an aqueduct or two all of my gold by the way is going into more troops it's really important that I keep the momentum and more horsemen will help with that more than anything else well, that was an easy siege two units because of the way the river falls I like that let's start doing damage to the city might need a few more units if the cities are this strong but I'm optimistic I'm optimistic Byzantium but it's a bad place for your scout it's right where I was going one more attack one more attack yeah so far so good with a little bit more of a sneaky pillage there it's another turns worth of science I might as well the capital falls and mathematics is mine everything is very very loyal now Liang come through to this captured city it's three down I believe four more to go going to build the aqueduct in my capital before the industrial zone just because the industrial zone will then give me the tradition of industry achievement that the challenge was going for but also will give me some era score as well not that era score is a problem but I like era score here's a little bit of a fun upgrade one crossbow two crossbows and three crossbows oh these do a little bit more damage both to units and also the cities that I'm besieging speaking of a one a two a three 
all my other units around, getting ready to have some fun. My last city in this beautiful little triangle is now complete. First thing I'm going to do is lay the foundations for this industrial zone. A lot of these tiles have stuff I want to chop off them, but we'll get there. Feudalism. I can get two charges extra on my builders. Brilliant. Let's put monumentality back into my government to celebrate that properly. Ah, oh, and again, I should have switched my government. I didn't. Ah, we're just rocking it now. Two random Eurekas and one inspiration from Omar. Other options of this era are Hildegard and Abu. Now Abu is the medic, which is quite handy. Hildegard makes my holy sites better. I think I'm just going to take the scientist for now. Hildegard, yeah, I don't really mind if, if, if I miss out. Oh, that's a Cree Pikeman. That's a little bit tougher. J just a little bit. I mean, luckily for me, I think I'll be fine either way, but I don't appreciate that. Let's lower this city down by making sure all of its districts are pillaged. And do we have any Igniter. Oh, this almost ruined it. It almost ruined it. I was going to put a campus on that tile. Alas, I cannot, but that's that's okay. There's some under a holy site. For you, I thought this had all been ruined for a second. It hasn't. Don't worry. We're all good. We're all good. Actually, speaking of, I'm just going to use some faith to start accelerating through this whole industrial project. I want this to be the biggest hub my empire has ever seen. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!